The term modern classic has been tossed around a lot these days. Practically every special edition, semi-rare version of an ordinary car or forgotten model from the 90s and 2000s is called that. Yet despite their scarcity, only a select few of these vehicles truly earn the distinction of being a bona fide classic. It must possess an exceptional quality that ignites the imagination of motorheads and leaves an enduring impact on the tapestry of automotive history. Now imagine harnessing the spirit of Formula One within the framework of an accessible roadster, a feat that sparks the interest of automotive enthusiasts and casual drivers alike. What does it look like when engineering embraces the spirit of defiance? When boundaries are not just pushed, but completely shattered? When a singular vision of excellence becomes a relentless pursuit, unhindered by norms or limits? Imagine a vehicle that disrupts the mold, redefines expectations, and recalibrates the parameters of speed and performance. In 1999, driven by a sense of daring innovation and a refusal to accept the ordinary, Honda embarked on this audacious quest. This mission led to the creation of a machine that transcended the traditional concept of a sports car. It went beyond the expectations of a roadster. This daring endeavor gave birth to a marvel carved from steel, passion, and ambition. A symphony of speed, a testament to Honda's unyielding pursuit of excellence. The giants of the automotive world, Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, all bore witness to what became possible when constraints were cast aside, when the very understanding of automotive speed and handling was redefined. After all, straight roads are for fast cars, turns are for fast drivers. Colin McRae. But what if a car could take the essence of Formula One technology and seamlessly weave it into a daily driver? The answer was the Honda S2000, an accessible roadster with the soul of a race car. A car that represented the end of an era. A unique engineering approach that delivered unmatched driving dynamics, a particular technical layout, and all of that in a recognizable package with no successor. As a result, the S2K enjoys a steady rise in interest and captivates the imagination of fans not only by its rarity, but also by its uncompromised driving feel. From the mind of Suichiro Honda, a titan in the world of automotive innovation, came a vehicle that dared to ask, what if? Let's delve into the thrilling narrative of this audacious machine, a saga that continues to capture the hearts of car enthusiasts worldwide, one thrilling rev at a time. The year was 1998, and Honda was nearing its golden anniversary, celebrating five decades of technological innovation and unwavering commitment to driving pleasure. The Japanese automaker had a vision. They sought to embody their legacy and racing heritage in a vehicle that would capture the spirit of a race car while offering an exhilarating open-top drive. Back in 1995, the Tokyo Motor Show buzzed with anticipation. Among the vehicles on display, one stood out. The Honda Sport Study Model, SSM. A concept car that hinted at the future. This concept roadster bore the distinct influence of Honda's first Formula One racing car, the Honda RA272 and the nimble Caterham 7. The SSM sparked excitement with its mid-engine rear-wheel drive configuration, symbolizing Honda's audacity. The responsibility of turning this concept into reality fell onto the shoulders of Shigeru Uehara, a revered automotive engineer at Honda R&D. Uehara was already known for his pivotal role in the development of the iconic Honda NSX and his friendship with the racing legend, Artin Senna. The next challenge, to breathe life into the S2000 from the foundations of the SSM. Uehara and his team were not simply automotive engineers, they were innovators. They held tightly to Honda's core values, preferring them to the ever-changing whims of the market. They strived to create a vehicle that satisfied them as engineers, something that truly embodied the spirit of Honda. The developmental journey wasn't a walk in the park. Uehara's team put the prototype through its paces on racetracks and rugged mountain roads across Japan and Europe. The goal was a car that merged with its driver, responding directly and precisely, providing sharp handling, and packing enough power and torque for a thrilling drive. The Roadster, birthed from these trials, was more than just a car. It was Uehara's swan song, a farewell gift to the automotive world before his retirement. This S2K was not merely a collection of parts, it represented a vision realized, 
a testament to the relentless quest for automotive perfection. The inspiration for the S2000 didn't spring out of thin air. Its roots were embedded deeply in Honda's involvement in the pinnacle of motorsport, Formula One. It was in this high-stakes world of relentless innovation that Honda's engineers sought to channel the excitement of F1 into a street-legal roadster. If the Mazda Miata was primarily for people looking for a convertible to cruise the boulevards, the S2000 was for people looking for twisty mountain roads, autocross stages, and drivers who want to experience mechanical bliss with their F20C four-cylinder engine as it screamingly approached the 9,000 RPM redline. You're wrong if you think the S2000 was just another roadster. It was a proper sports car with a folding canvas top. The S2000 had double wishbone suspension all around, limited slip differential as standard, and the only transmission choice was a six-speed manual gearbox. With the driver-focused interior, precise instruments, and short-throw shifter, it was clear that Honda made S2000 for driving pleasure. This was a clear nod to Honda's F1 prowess, drawing a direct line between their race car engines and their road cars. But the F1-inspired wizardry wasn't confined to the engine bay. Honda's engineers developed an innovative X-Bone frame. The Honda S2000 has always been more than just an exhilarating roadster that set the streets and racetracks alive. Its chassis construction consisted of a strong middle section X-frame, which provided structural rigidity, always problematic on convertibles, and low center of gravity. That solution was first used on Lotus Elan back in the mid-60s, but has also been used in modern cars due to its ability to provide strength to the chassis without adding unnecessary weight. The unique frame design, along with the 50-50 weight distribution and rear-wheel drive layout, played a pivotal role in the Japanese sports car's balanced feel and agile cornering capabilities. From the drawing board to the assembly line, the car was a testament to Honda's unyielding dedication to driving enjoyment. It was a remarkable blend of F1-derived technology and intuitive design, resulting in a two-seater convertible that was as thrilling to drive as it was innovative. This was how Honda, on the eve of its 50th anniversary, paid homage to its rich heritage while also propelling itself into the future. The S2000 was no ordinary car. It was a dream turned reality. The vision to translate the sheer thrill of F1 into a road-going vehicle resulted in the birth of an icon. In 1999, the curtain rose on a new chapter in Honda's history with the launch of the S2K, produced along with the legendary Honda NSX in the Takanazawa plant in Tochigi Prefecture in Japan, came the AP1. This first generation model hit the market not with a whisper, but with an audacious high revving roar that echoed through the global car community. The public response was immediate and enthusiastic, with auto enthusiasts and casual drivers alike captivated by this unique blend of daily usability and race-inspired performance. But it wasn't merely the stratospheric red line that set the convertible sports car's engine apart. With 240 horsepower on tap, the engine had a specific output of 120 horsepower per liter, which was, at the time of its release, the highest of any naturally aspirated production car engine. But the S2000 was not merely about raw power. It exemplified Honda's approach to total car performance. Here was a car that was not just driven but danced with, a partner in the sublime waltz of speed and control. Inspired by the excitement of a Stradivarius, the S2000 AP1 followed a design philosophy that aimed to harmonize the joy of open-air driving with the thrill of an intense, high-revving sports car. It embodied Honda's commitment to delivering a holistic driving experience, connecting the driver not just to the machine, but also to the road and the world around them. Throughout its production run from 1999 to 2003, the AP1 marked the beginning of an era for Honda. Around 66,000 units of the AP1 were produced worldwide, each one representing Honda's vision and commitment to delivering an authentic, driver-focused experience. It was more than a vehicle. It was a tangible manifestation of Honda's unique blend of innovation, performance, and craftsmanship. In the AP1, Honda birthed more than a new model. They created an icon, a testament to their racing pedigree and engineering prowess. It was a clear declaration of their capability to blend the excitement of an F1 car with the charm of a roadster. The S2000 had arrived, 
making a mark that would be forever etched into the automotive world. As the calendar flipped to 2004, the automotive world welcomed an evolved breed of Honda's Roadster, the second generation, known as the AP2. Keeping the exhilarating spirit of the Honda intact, Honda made significant changes beneath the surface, offering a more refined driving experience. One of the most significant changes was the re-engineered 2.2-liter engine, an increase from the previous 2.0-liter. This upgrade allowed for an enhanced torque output, jumping from 153 pound-feet to 162 pound-feet, thus providing a broader power band for an enriched driving experience. The engine's red line was slightly tamed down to 8,200 revolutions per minute, yet it retained the exhilarating high-rev nature that S2000 aficionados cherished. Honda's engineers also revised the AP2 suspension to improve handling and stability, allowing drivers to better exploit the enhanced performance of the upgraded engine. These mechanical changes propelled the high-performance vehicle into new performance territory, pushing the boundaries of what a roadster could offer. Aesthetically, the AP2 received a tasteful facelift. Freshened up with new headlights and taillight designs, the car donned a more modern and aggressive persona, captivating onlookers with its charming aesthetics. But the AP2's evolution wasn't solely about power and aesthetics. Honda introduced significant technological advancements, including a drive-by-wire throttle system. This electronic control system replaced the traditional mechanical linkage, resulting in more precise throttle response. Along with this, Honda incorporated Vehicle Stability Assist, VSA, enhancing the car's safety quotient by offering improved control during challenging driving conditions. From 2004 to 2009, the AP2 carried forward the legacy of its predecessor, with over 55,000 units finding their way onto roads across the globe. Each unit, a testament to Honda's relentless pursuit of driving pleasure and technical innovation, the AP2 signified a new chapter in the S2000's journey, marked by its evolved sophistication without compromising its roots. The high-revving, open-top symphony that the Japanese sports car played on, capturing the hearts of enthusiasts with Honda's dedication to driving joy and relentless innovation. The rise of the AP2 met an unforeseen obstacle in 2008. With the onset of the global housing crisis, this financial cataclysm impacted economies across the world, reshaping consumer priorities and spending habits. Honda's management realized that the sales figures were declining, not just for S2000, but all two-seat Roadster models on the market. Other similar models, like the Toyota MR2, had faced the same problems. The industry was shifting, the recession was underway, and customers demanded a different kind of enthusiast's cars. Its days were numbered, and S2000 was slowly fading. The original formula was fine. It was just the fact that small roadsters weren't considered desirable by the majority of new car buyers. The sales numbers reflected that, at least in the North American market. After a fantastic start of the decade and over 9,000 cars sold per year, Honda barely managed to shift 2,500 copies by 2008. It was a sign that a successful era had come to an end. However, the company couldn't let the S2000 fade out without the appropriate trim level. The Japanese manufacturer was gearing up for something special, something that would push the car's performance envelope further. Enter the Club Racer and the Type S. Unveiled in 2008, the Club Racer, or CR, was more than just a special edition. It was a f***ing masterpiece. Designed with the US market in mind, it was a track-optimized hardcore variant that took the S2000's driving purity and intensified it creating an experience that was unfiltered and visceral. Although some journalists dismissed it as just a farewell special with a body kit, it was far more than that. The CR wore its track-focused intentions on its sleeve. Honda employed aerodynamic enhancements, such as a distinctive front spoiler and a formidable rear wing to increase downforce, lending the car superior stability when taking on the straights or negotiating hairpin bends at high speeds. The car's weight was significantly reduced by replacing the standard soft top with a unique Barchetta-style cover behind the seats, which gave the car a more aggressive, speedster-like look. Although it was unnecessary, it was functional since it covered empty space once reserved for folding roofs. The S2000CR was produced without the convertible top, meaning there was no protection if the driver was caught in the rain.
However, each customer received a black hardtop that could be easily mounted. Since the roof mechanism was gone, Honda's engineers used that space to mount structural bracing and stiffen the body, improving the handling and driving feel. Of course, the spare tire and jack were gone as well. In a relentless quest for weight savings, engineers turned to the interior and removed the audio system and the AC, marking them as a $1,000 option for the CR. The unnecessary sound deadening was removed, shaving a few additional pounds. When the S2000 CR hit the market, the car was around 100 pounds lighter than the regular model, which might not sound as much, but considering the fact that the standard S2000 weighed around 2,864 pounds, the CR's 2,765 was a notable weight loss. Inside, the club racer received Alcantara seats and a peak power indicator, a nod to the car's track-oriented DNA. Modifications ran deeper than the surface. Honda's engineers started with stiffer suspension, a lower ratio steering rack, a new exhaust system, and wider Bridgestone tires, providing the car with more precise steering and handling capabilities. The front suspension was 37%, while the rear suspension was 17% stiffer than the standard model. The damping force was 50% more up front and 32% in the back. This wholly transformed handling, especially on the track and in spirited driving. Braking was also improved with a slightly wider track due to different performance rubber, although the braking system is identical to the standard S2000. Since the steering was more direct, the drivers could toss the car around the pavement even more precisely. From today's perspective, the S2000 CR isn't that fast, but it possesses unparalleled driving dynamics, lightweight charm, and the ability to outhandle much more expensive sports cars, allowing drivers to push their limits on the track. Despite the fact that the S2000 CR failed to meet Honda's sales expectations, it succeeded in creating one of its biggest legends. Since the S2000 was discontinued, fans of pure driving sensation have cherished this model and lusted after the CR as its top version. Things that make the standard S2000 so great are even more pronounced on the CR, and rarity only added to its allure. In the last couple of years, car collectors started paying attention to uncompromised models that kept the spirit of driving alive and looking for rare versions to preserve. The S2000 CR ticks all the boxes as being an immensely fun car to drive in its standard form, let alone when thoroughly modified from the factory. Once a hard sell for Honda dealers became a hot commodity in just a few short years. The true rise in prices for the S2000 CR first became apparent in 2017 to 2018 when well-preserved and low mileage models started achieving $40,000, which was basically a bit over MSRP. Due to its rarity and the fact that few have been exported to other parts of the world or crashed on road, prices were rising and soon S2000 CRs sold for double the MSRP. While the CR was charming the US market, Honda had a special treat for its home turf, the Type S. Exclusively available in Japan, the Type S shared many traits with the CR, including aerodynamic and suspension tweaks. However, in contrast to the CR's racing-ready approach, the Type S retained the standard convertible top, offering drivers the thrill of high-speed open-top motoring. Both the CR and Type S are gems in the S2000 lineage. With just about 699 CRs and 1,755 Type S units ever made, the record was finally set in 2022 when a Mint 132-mile example was sold for a whopping $200,000 on Bring a Trailer, which is over five times its original MSRP. Do we need better proof of the S2000 CR's stellar reputation amongst car aficionados? I don't think so. The introduction of the CR and the Type S marked the zenith of the convertible sports car's evolution. They were Honda's declaration of unwavering commitment to performance and driving purity. With these models, Honda translated its racing pedigree into two road legal packages that thrilled both on the track and the open road. By launching the Club Racer and the Type S, Honda pushed the boundaries of what the Roadster could be. The Honda S2000 has always been more than just an exhilarating roadster that set the streets and racetracks alive. Its allure and charm resonated far beyond the asphalt, etching its mark in the realm of popular culture, making the high-performance vehicle a cultural icon that transcended the automotive world. The two-seater convertible's first brush with global stardom outside of car enthusiast circles can be traced back to 2001, with the release of the high-octane, adrenaline-pumping cult classic the Fast and the Furious. 
In this film, the Japanese sports car, driven by the antagonist Johnny Tran, was painted in the striking Berlina black, clad with a sleek veal side body kit and shining chrome wheels. The S2000 screen presence was nothing short of electric, impressing audiences worldwide with its sleek, aggressive aesthetics and formidable performance. Its fierce drag race against a Jetta left an indelible mark on the viewers, bolstering the Roadster's image as a high-performance vehicle. The Roadster's journey in pop culture didn't stop at the silver screen. Video game developers, recognizing the car's appeal, immortalized the convertible sports car in the virtual world. The S2000 found a new home in popular racing games like the Need for Speed series, Forza Motorsport, and Gran Turismo. The rush of pushing the Roadster's engine to its high revving limit, the challenge of mastering its precise rear-wheel drive dynamics, were all captured and brought to gamers worldwide. The Japanese sports car's digital avatar continued to fuel its cult status, making it a favorite amongst virtual racers, and further cementing its place in pop culture. The Roadster's enchantment extended to car shows too. It was admired for its balanced blend of aesthetics and performance. Its pure Roadster silhouette and engineering prowess catching the attention of visitors and judges alike. Its flexible platform was a canvas for modification enthusiasts, who sculpted stunning builds that perfectly encapsulated the spirit of the car tuning culture. Even in its stock form, the Honda was a beacon of Japanese performance and engineering that resonated with car lovers globally. Whether it was on the cinema screen, a gaming console, a car show floor, or a tuning garage, the two-seater convertible not only stood out, but it also shone, captivating millions and transcending its physical construct. It was an automotive symbol of speed, freedom, and style. From the moment it arrived, the Honda S2000 captured the adoration of automotive critics and enthusiasts alike. More than just a spirited roadster, it was Honda's definitive statement, a tribute to their racing heritage, and a demonstration of their engineering might. This joyous ode to motoring quickly rose through the ranks, often going head-to-head -head and even outperforming rivals in its class. Automotive organizations worldwide hailed the convertible sports car. Esteemed publications such as Car and Driver recognized its prowess and included the high-performance vehicle on their annual 10 Best Cars list multiple times. The Japanese sports car won plaudits for its impressive performance, nimble handling, and driver-centric cockpit marking its territory as a leader in its segment. British television show Top Gear also lavished praise on the Roadster, admiring its perfect 50-50 weight distribution and the exhilarating performance of its high-revving VTEC engine. Comparative reviews often pitted the two-seater convertible against premium sports cars, some with much heftier price tags. Its main rivals included respected names such as the BMW Z4 and the Porsche Boxster, Despite the fierce competition, the S2000 didn't just hold its ground, it often outperformed its rivals, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of early 2000s sports cars. The Honda S2000 has always been an alluring roadster straight from the factory, but it may very well be the car's adaptability for customization that has solidified its iconic status in the automotive realm. This transformative capacity has sparked a vibrant aftermarket scene. Key players in this sphere are renowned Japanese tuning houses like ASM, Voltex, Amuse, and Spoon, each offering their unique enhancements. ASM is recognized for its precision-engineered aero parts and performance components that accentuate the Japanese sports car's inherent balance. Voltex is revered for its advanced body kits and aerodynamic parts, enhancing the convertible sports car's efficiency through air. Amuse excels in crafting high-performance exhaust systems, helping unleash the beloved VTEC roar. Spoon provides comprehensive performance upgrades, showcasing the car's versatility and tuning capacity. The high-performance vehicle's tuning scene is lauded not merely for the range of parts and upgrades, but also for the diversity of creations enthusiasts have crafted. From fierce drift machines, high-velocity track racers, mountain carvers, to elegant weekend cruisers, the two-seater convertible has proven to be an adaptable canvas for car enthusiasts of all preferences. This dynamic aftermarket scene has undoubtedly amplified the Honda's enduring popularity. The ceaseless passion of enthusiasts continues to fuel the convertible sports car's evolution, keeping the exhilarating essence of the classic roadster alive. The Honda S2000, with its audacious design and bold engineering, left a monumental impression on both Honda and the global automotive community. The ripple effects of the S2000's innovative features 
and driving-centric philosophy are seen in Honda's subsequent performance models. This influence is prominently witnessed in the current Honda Civic Type R, where the dedication to driver engagement and precision mechanics echo the S2000's core values. Speculation about a Honda Roadster's successor often circulates within automotive enthusiast circles. Though Honda has yet to officially announce a direct sequel, its recent engagement in performance vehicles, evidenced by the revival of the NSX and the continual refinement of the Civic Type R, may hint at a potential rekindling of the Roadster flame. As we all await Honda's next move with bated breath, the high-performance vehicle's legacy undeniably continues to shape its approach to sports cars. Meanwhile, the S2000's popularity in the used car market has not only remained steady, but has actually grown. It's hailed as a modern classic, a status that has driven up its demand and consequently, its market value. This phenomenon isn't a mere surge of nostalgia, but a testament to the enduring appeal of a meticulously engineered, driver-focused sports car. The S2000's influence is comprehensive, reaching beyond Honda's vehicle lineup to impact the broader automotive world. This roadster served as a benchmark for other sports cars, setting a standard for high revving engines, driver engagement, and balanced handling. It's a testament to the brilliance of engineering and the joy of driving that resonates with car enthusiasts globally. In reflecting on the S2000's journey, from its birth as a celebration of Honda's 50th anniversary to its legacy as a modern classic, we marvel at the impact of this extraordinary roadster. Its influence spans decades, continents, and cultures, making it a true icon in the automotive world. Though the production has ended, its essence lives on with every rev of a VTEC engine, every curve of an open road, and in the hearts of countless car enthusiasts who relish the pure thrill of driving. The S2000's ethos, a roadster that perfectly marries performance with driver engagement, remains an inspiring beacon as we look toward the automotive future. We stand in awe of its journey from an ambitious dream to a modern classic. Unveiled in 1999 and ending with the exclusive CR model in 2009, the S2000 story is one of innovation and the pursuit of driving perfection. It wasn't just a car, it was Honda's audacious vision to bring F1 excitement to everyday driving. It encapsulated the thrill of a high-revving F1 car, making it accessible to drivers everywhere. The S2000 was never about the destination, it was about the joy of the journey, the lure of the open road, the symphony of the engine. Its legacy lives on, resonating within the hearts of car enthusiasts worldwide. The car is a symbol of a time when driving pleasure was paramount, a sentiment that's become precious in our increasingly autonomous world. Here's to the Honda S2000, a testament to Honda's boldness and engineering mastery, a classic that brought the thrill of F1 to the streets, and a car that will continue to captivate enthusiasts for generations.